Hi, Gary Cruz here. If you want to know how to connect a GoPro Hero 7 to the ATEM Studio HD, then watch this video. Hi, Gary Cruz with Amaze Studios. I've seen a lot of questions regarding how to connect a Hero 7 to an ATEM Studio HD. Right now, you're looking at video from a GoPro Hero 7 plugged in directly into my ATEM Studio. If I switch over to the other camera, you'll see the GoPro from my Sony PXWZ90 filming the GoPro. And if I switch it back, you'll see that camera in the background. Now this is plugged in directly. I have both of them synced up. If you take a look at the settings here, it's currently not connected to my decimator. However, in order to get it to work, I had to connect this HDMI cable over to this decimator MDLX. So the HDMI is going into here from the GoPro. So the GoPro into the HDMI input, and then the SDI input goes directly to the back of the ATEM Studio. Now, I'm not sure why it works only that way, because I couldn't plug it in directly. If you want to see what happens when I plug it in directly, let's go ahead and unplug this. Okay. And we'll, pl we'll plug this HDMI cable right to the back of my ATEM. Now I have the the GoPro plugged into HDMI 2, but there's no video coming out. And just to double check the settings on the ATEM. Sorry, I'm filming the screen here. If I switch over to my preferences and go to the 1080p 59.94, that's what I have it set at. The primary benefit of using the Decimator MDLX with the GoPro Hero 2 is one, it actually works. And two, is that you can convert the HDMI, <laughs> the, the GoPro went asleep. I'll show you how to get around that. There's also a couple settings that you need to configure on the GoPro, and I'll show you that. But the primary benefit of using the Decimator MDLX is that when you have the HDMI go into the HDMI input, you can then do a long run using the SDI. Let's get this GoPro connected back to this MDLX so we can then see the settings. Okay, so now what we have here is the, there is a mini HDMI cable. And I'll have a link in the description below to where you can get that on Amazon. And then that goes to the standard HDMI. We'll plug this into the MDLX. And then the SDI from the output goes into the ATEM Studio. Now I'll turn this camera on. And let's switch over to the GoPro. Okay, well, before I do that, I'll probably do the settings from the other camera, but you see how there's menu across the top? You most likely don't wanna see that during your video. So let me switch back over here. Switch, take this cable out so I can work with the interface. Now, if you go with the iPhone settings, you can probably set that all up, but I'll just do it via the screen. If we swipe down from the top and go into preferences and click preferences and then go to general. See the auto power off is set to five minutes. Let's actually change that to never. The other thing that you want to do is over on input output on the HDMI output. So if it's on monitor, you'll see the camera live view, including the camera info on the HDTV when connected to a micro HDMI cable. If we switch to media, 
it'll play back your media on the big screen. And then on live, it'll show the camera's live view without camera info. And for most users that are using this, that's probably the setting that you want. Now for the camera itself, I have it set to 1080 60 wide, and you can adjust those settings. But what I found is that it's outputting 60p signal. So let's plug this back in. Now the GoPro is again connected to the Decimator MDLX via HDMI and going out via SDI. And now that we turned it over to live, we no longer see the menu. And this is most likely what you want. So you can see that it's pretty instantaneous. If you see a delay, you might want to go and turn off image stabilization because image stabilization adds quite a bit of latency to the video. So just make sure you turn that off. I'm going to plug the HDMI output of the GoPro Hero 7 into this video assist so you can see the resolutions. And you can see that it's outputting 1080p, 59.94. And this is with the GoPro plugged directly into. This is with the GoPro plugged directly into the video assist. In this section, we'll cover how we'll get the GoPro working with my existing cameras that are on a different standard. The standard I've chose is 1080p 29.97 because most of my cameras support that out of the box. And I'll go ahead and select that and click on set and this video should disappear. But I'll switch the Sony output to support this resolution. In fact, when I switch to HDMI, over to my decimator that's in the box of this ATEM Studio, it should switch to resolution accordingly. Let's go ahead and change it and this video should disappear. Another option that you might wanna consider is this tiny camera. Okay, let me switch over to the Sony. This is called the Crazy Fire and it has a 128 Sony sensor. I got it on Amazon. I'll provide a link in the description below. Let's see how that compares to the GoPro and get that connected. Now that we've got all the resolutions set, we'll compare the GoPro Hero 7 against the Crazy Fire. Right now you're looking at the Sony. If we switch over to this, I think this is the Crazy Fire and this is the GoPro. Crazy Fire and GoPro. Let's move this over here. Rotate this over here. And try to get the field of view very similar. So that's the, this is the Crazy Fire. And on the Crazy Fire, we switch back over to this camera. We There is a zoom and focus right here. And let me just get a better view here for the Sony. So one controls the zoom and one controls the focus. So if we switch this over to the crazy fire. Okay, so now I can see the, if I, this is the focus and there's a zoom. Okay. I'm gonna zoom out and then let's focus in on that. Too far out, oops. Look at that, the focus is so crazy I can focus actually on the screen itself. Okay. So there's a little bit of flexibility of the Crazy Fire. The other advantage I see with the Crazy Fire, it supports SDI by default. And if we click on the menu settings, Let's go over here. There's a button on the Crazy Fire, so I can click on the menu settings, switch over to that. So if I go through the menu, you can see exposure. You can control the exposure, the shutter speed, and the automatic gain control. There's a backlight, wide dynamic range, day, night color, black and white, external, auto. I'll just switch it to color. If we go to color, Auto white balance, color gain, dynamic noise, 
think is dynamic noise. Image, got sharpness, gamma. We can flip the mirror. Uh, so if we go to on, it flips that upside down. You can flip it this way. Ace, what is ace? I'm not sure what ace is. Defog on, privacy off. On, I guess you can put some blocks on there. Return, go to motion. And so if there's some motion in front of it, you'll see those little blocks. I guess you can use that for motion detection. And then if we go to system, We've got the SDI output. We can change the frame rate, which I'm not going to do now because it'll go blank. The frequency is 60 hertz. Image range full. Comp. So okay, so full comp. It looks more like a raw. Kind of like comp. Let's do comp. Color bar bar on. Let's turn that back off because I messed it up. Cam title. Right, left, off. Version, reset, return, and exit out of there. Switch over to the GoPro. Here's the GoPro. And here's the crazy fire. Let's see if I can get the field of view similar. Let's zoom out a bit and zoom and focus. Okay, got that focused. Switch to the GoPro. On comparison, here's the GoPro. I noticed that there's a little bit less noise in the black area of the monitor compared to the Crazy Fire. In fact, let me go back over to the image system. Go back to full. All right, switch back over to the GoPro. And that's the Crazy Fire, GoPro, Crazy Fire. Let's see how it handles some motion. Okay, there's the GoPro. Now on the GoPro, if you have um, some latency, just double check if image stabilization is on. Here's the crazy fire. Okay, has a nice wide view. All right, so that really covers how to connect the GoPro into the ATEM Studio. I hope that you like that you've seen a alternative, which is this crazy fire camera right here, which has SDI output that natively connects to the ATEM Studio. The biggest disadvantage of connecting the GoPro directly to the ATEM Studio HD is having to use a decimator MDLX to convert the signal into SDI so that you can natively connect to it. If you don't have this, the other option is using a decimator cross converter to convert the signal to, to match the setting of the ATEM Studio. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button. And if you're interested in switching videos in general, please subscribe to this channel and thanks for watching. Crazy Fire versus GoPro. Or is it GoPro versus Crazy Fire? Battle of the small cameras. One with SDI, the other with HDMI. SDI, HDMI, telephoto, cropping, which I didn't show, but no one can beat the Sony. It's so clear. The Sony has a one inch sensor. You've got the crazy fire with a one and two eighths sensor. And then whatever sensor they've got in this GoPro Hero 7, which happens to be clearer than the Sony one. Hope you liked it. Outtakes. Here's some B-roll of the differences between the GoPro. This is the Crazy Fire. And this is the GoPro. The Crazy Fire, which is zoomed in, has a much more pleasing field of view because it's telephoto. But when you have a wide angle like the GoPro, if I switch this over, Got that fisheye effect. I'll switch it from wide to linear. Okay, now I've got it to linear. Put it right beside the crazy fire. Okay, 
That's the Crazy Fire. This is the GoPro. This is the Crazy Fire. And this is the GoPro. Let me try and put it down here. So right now, this is the GoPro. And that is the Crazy Fire. If I zoom out, let's match the Crazy Fire. So this gives you a comparison of what it looks like with a human face versus a keyboard. This is what it looks like with me as a person, because if you're filming a person, this is what it looks like on the GoPro. And if I switch it over to the Crazy Fire. Oh, another advantage that the GoPro has is a microphone, but hopefully you're using a, a, a real mic like this Shure SM7B, link in the description. The Crazy Fire has no audio, um, so it has SDI, and then I'm using the Behringer XR12 X-Air mixer to get this microphone into my ATEM studio. And if you're interested in that, check out the description because you have to play with the delay settings in order for it to sync. And hopefully you can make a comparison. The Crazy Fire is a pretty good value for a small camera that can connect to the ATEM Studio HD.